Okay guys, we made it here back to the house. Uh, this should be my last trip back and forth from the shop to the house. And I figured I would kind of give you a little rundown on everything that I'm bringing and how I've got it set up so far. We got the obvious track tires, just uh, Mickey Thompson Pro Radials. And today I decided to load up an oil bucket. So this has got a gallon worth of transmission fluid, PB blaster, I got a can of brake clean. I got one oil change worth of oil. And I've also got two oil filters in here, some pig mat, funnels, so I should be, oh, this a uh, gallon of water. So I should be pretty set on fluids. Over in this department, we got jack stands. And this tote, I've got all of my tools and some extra parts. Now I've got two rolls of wire, I've got flashlights, two fire extinguishers, uh, extra rack of coils, and uh, what else I got in there? All kinds of stuff. You know, butt connectors and eyelets and all kinds of that stuff. Extra quarter inch push lock line. So that's pretty much what's in that tote. And then over here, today I picked up, I actually bought a kit off of somebody, but there's a whole entire LS gasket kit, at least for the most part. So I got head gaskets, uh, valve cover gaskets, valley cover gaskets, timing chain cover gaskets, front and rear main seals, yada yada. So I should have that covered. Uh, over here, wedged in here, I got my air compressor, my old Milwaukee. What are you laughing at? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you're silly. So I got hand wipes, air compressor, a uh, 100 foot extension cord. I don't know why, but I've got it. I've got this toolbox, uh, Work Pro. This is like 240 bucks off of Amazon, and it's pretty legit. So well, at least I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but it is pretty cool. Uh, you've got all your quarter inch, three eighths, half inch drive sockets. Uh, the next drawer down, you got wrenches. Next drawer down from that, you've got uh, pliers and Steli. Okay, Steli's just being a goofball over there. <laughs> She's so silly. But anyway, this toolbox is pretty uh, pretty legit for the price and uh, how convenient it is. I did I did weigh it. It weighs 47 pounds, so it's not not terrible. We got the jack. The jack handle's in the back. It's behind the fuel cell and everything. I don't know where I'm gonna put my helmet yet. Um, the rest of my race suit is all stuffed behind my seat. So I do have a little bit of room behind the seat here. There's my other fire extinguisher. Keep that thing on me. So um, pants, jacket, gloves, and boots are all behind the seat. Uh, over here behind, in the middle, I got like my tuning bag with my cords and my laptop and you know, all that stuff. And I'm hoping that, you know, Cody's riding with me. There's a little bit of room back there for just whatever he might want to bring with us. Uh, if you don't have a Milwaukee top off, I don't know how you are surviving. So get you one of those. It's $99. It's got 110 USB, and then uh, I forgot what that is. Like it's not micro USB, whatever the roundy round is for like Samsung. But that thing charges super fast. It's awesome, and it works for everything. So anyway, I got that stuff. Uh, this tote right here is just going to be Cody and I's. Um, clothing bags and everything, just in case we run into some rain. They're all sealed up. So, and of course, I got the street beefs on there, so if it rains, we should be set. And this thing is pretty much ready to go. Uh, we're gonna drive it to lunch tomorrow. Uh, it's gonna be hotter than heck tomorrow, 98 degrees. This truck does stay pretty cool. It doesn't get hot, usually, so. Uh, gonna drive it to lunch. Gonna talk to some other buddies that are also doing the trip with us, and we're kind of we're gonna go over our um, you know over our tools and our parts lists, uh, stuff like that. So just maybe give pointers or see who's bringing what. Maybe we all don't have to pack the same thing. So that's what we got going on. I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty confident about this trip. Uh, this is my third time driving the truck with the rear end gear and it, it makes zero noise whatsoever and I am pumped about that. So it's been making noise for quite a while and to have 
have it make no noise at all is amazing. So shout out to Rob at Southwicks for that, of course. Uh, Cruise Customs, they did alignment the other day on it and it drives straight as an arrow. This is probably the first time that I've ever gotten a professional alignment. Usually put my good eye on it with a tape measure, yeah, which is probably why I eat up tires so much. We are all registered. We are all teched in. We got here at like, I got here at like 7.20. It's probably like 10.30ish. Yep, 10.30. About 10.30ish right now, so it's been a little while, but we're all good to go. We're gonna put this sticker on, which I'm already struggling with, and we're gonna find a better pitting spot. We're gonna find somewhere to pit and unload everything. Uh, testing starts at about three o'clock, so hopefully we'll just make one hit and it's good, but we'll go accordingly, see how that works out. So. All right, guys, we got the stickers on the truck. Got everything unloaded, got the tires switched out, and here pretty soon in the next 20 minutes they're gonna call us up to make some test runs for today. In the pits with my friends, we got uh, Nate's car, we got Tyler's car. Tyler's car hasn't been on the road in a while. He's about to make his first pass, uh, it's been three or four years, so he's gonna be just running 10-0 class right now because we failed at getting our NHRA license. Or at least he did. I did. So. Failure. There's the homies. All right, guys, we're making our first pass. Just as, this is just testing.
exact same time almost. 866. 158 miles per hour. That's pretty good. Not bad. I'm pretty stoked about that. The temps are hot, everything's hot, so I can see why on this same tune-up from an 850 pass, it dropped a tenth. Uh, that was expected, so I'm stoked about that. Uh, tomorrow, we're gonna be running in cooler conditions. That brakes feel good. Where's our pits at? I am stoked. Man, that is a good feeling. So this morning I got up early. I had a weird stomach issue. Like I felt, I don't know, uh, the whole way out here, I feel like, man, I hear a misfire. Man, I think the transmission's slipping. Man, this and that and this and that. And uh, everything checks out. This thing did exactly what it was supposed to do. So now I think I could take a little chill pill. Uh, I'm gonna switch tires. I'm gonna load all this stuff back up and we're good to go for tomorrow the lanes it's day one of six summer we're at cordova and the crew decided that i should switch tires and run the rowdy radial class so now i am on a 26 inch tire eight and a half inches wide i took 300 out of the hit i'm really hoping it just makes it a to b on this tune-up i feel like we're gonna have our hands full today
much spice on that one, but we, we swung for it. That was a pretty good pass. Well, not really, but I mean, I think we can dial it down a hair now, and uh, hopefully the next track will handle it. Oh, here we go. to wheelie I'm not positive but the front end was up pretty good All right guys, it's day two. We're in Byron, Illinois. We're already pitted and set up and ready to go. I got my little baby tires on. We're actually putting ice in it today because uh, before I wasn't really making, worried about making a bunch of power. Today I kind of need to make as much power as I can, but also get it to hook. So we got ice in it. I got this thing cooling down. Late yesterday I tried to make somewhat of a Hail Mary pass uh, fat fingered some stuff and it, it made a lot more boost than it was supposed to so uh, made more boost good amount of timing and the launch was the launch actually could use a little more so I took the boost ramp completely out of it so I, I put that back in it and we are going to I made those adjustments and we're gonna see if it works I, I I'm really feeling confident that I can get this tire to work I'm I'd be ecstatic to get a 520 pass today. So we need to catch up to Andy. And that's uh, that's our goal. At least get as close to Andy's times as we can. Uh, I'm not here to lose. So we're going to go after it. We're going to be making our first lick here pretty quick. You ready, Andy? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Are you? Feel, uh, I feel pretty confident. I feel pretty, pretty confident. decent at the tracks. Comparable to yesterday, I think we'll go A to B. And yeah. Hopefully we'll miss uh, Yeah. All right, well, good luck to you, buddy. You too. And uh, I'm coming for you, so. All right, I'll, you know, I'll you know, keep that in mind. It might take me a couple days, All but. Right, fine. Close yeah. we're learning and having fun, right? Yeah, we are, too. It's been it's been a pretty good time. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, All right, buddy, good luck. Thank you. Sorry for the spin. We got rained out. I made a really good first pass. 534 with a 125.60 foot on the little baby tires. I'm pretty pumped about that. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not going to count. Everybody's packed up. We're heading out of here right now. Um, since not all of the classes got to run, they kind of just cancel out the whole day. So, rained out for today. We're all switched over already. We're gonna hit the road and drive into some rain. Which ain't the biggest deal when I got these units on the back. So, stay tuned. We're gonna hit these checkpoints on the way. Okay, picture this. It's day two at Byron, Illinois. We started getting ready and we made one killer pass. It went at 534 on the first pass down. And I was trying to catch Andy. Andy was still going 520s. So I made one killer pass. Everything felt great. I drove right back around into the lanes and was gonna make another pass. I had it turned up a little bit more. I was gonna to try to get in, at least into the 520s. So, unfortunately it started raining. It got rained out. 
after my first pass, or my one and only pass, we, I mean, I kind of, I once over the gauges, you know, temperature was good, oil pressure seemed fine, everything else looked fine, you know, so I was ready to make another pass, I was ready to turn it up a little bit more. It rained, so we went back to the pits, we loaded everything up, we pull out of the drag strip, and as soon as I pulled out of the gate, I, I looked down, I glanced at all my gauges, oil pressure is at like 19 PSI. And I'm like, oh man, that's not good. So I was like, well, maybe we'll pull over and at least change the oil or check the oil, check the filter, we'll, we'll see what's going on. So I, I drove maybe another mile or two down the road and Oil pressure was getting even a little bit lower. It went down to like 17, and then I seen like 16. I'm like, no, we are pulling over, we're stopping, we're we're checking this stuff out. So we dropped, we pulled over in a parking lot. It's pouring down raining. I got all my stuff out, I had to go through my tools. I did bring extra oil filters. I dropped the oil filter to start with, just to see what was going on. I was gonna cut the oil filter open, see what I can see, see if there was any shavings. We dropped the filter into the pan and there was no need to cut the oil filter open because there was already copper flake everywhere in the pan. So at that point I was like, well, we're, we're, we're pretty much done here. I'm, I'm not going to push this thing. I don't want to tear up this motor any more than what it is already. And Cody and the rest of the guys didn't really want to see that and they had a lot of ideas. Let's, let's pull the motor out, let's put bearings in it, uh, let's call somebody, let's try to get a different motor, let's do this, let's do that. And I was basically, I, at the time I wasn't feeling it. I was like, we're just done, I, you know, I don't know if it's worth going through all the headache to try and put a motor in this thing or, or whatever. So I was almost ready to call my buddy for my truck and trailer to take me home. And then I was like, ah, let's at least check options. So I call Alan. Alan's been a great buddy of mine for a long time. He, he does kind of what I do. We, we buy Silverados, we take them apart. We sell the motors and the transmissions. Uh, we just part them out and you know, that's part of how we make our money. So. I call Alan, I said, Alan, how far are you away from Byron? He said, from where you're at right now, about an hour and 10 minutes. I'm like, okay, that's, that's not too bad at all, that's doable. I said, what motors do you got? He says, I got a 4.8 with 240,000 miles on it. He's like, I would trust this engine to do anything. And I'm like, all right, bring that motor. Bring that motor out, bring a balancer puller, and then, a cherry picker. So from there, it was a straight thrash. I, I told the guys, the guys were stoked. They're like, let's do this thing. And, and everybody pitched in hands on. Uh, you know, there was four or five cars with us and everybody pitched in to help out. And it was pretty awesome. We pulled the old motor out in 40 minutes and almost had it blown apart to put the new parts, or to put my parts on the the new engine. So by the time we got the motor out, hanging on the different cherry picker, another guy had stopped and let us borrow his cherry picker. So that was cool. So we had my motor out and then Alan pulls in 10 minutes later with the new motor. It couldn't have worked out any better. So we blasted the oil pan off and the timing chain cover, the flex plate, and that was about it, the valve covers. We literally changed nothing inside of this motor. No cam, no head studs, no head gaskets, no valve springs at the time. Uh, we just put a bone stock 408 in here and we just started thrashing to get this thing together. It was super cool. We put all the parts in and, uh, you know, put all the, old, the older parts under the newer motor, newer motor, and stabbed it back in the truck four hours flat from the time that I made my phone call to the time we started it for the first time was four hours and everything went pretty much flawlessly. We had to make zero trips to O'Reilly's, which, uh, 
<laughs> to me is super cool. Somebody pointed that out. Like, you know, we didn't have to run to any parts stores or do anything. We literally had everything we needed in the back of the truck and in the back of Alan's truck. So pretty neat how it all worked out. We put that 4.8 in and we literally drove four hours that night on that motor, which was pretty killer. Great oil pressure, no noises, nothing, no leaks. Uh, it was pretty awesome. So I kind of had to backtrack because I didn't really explain what had happened. We left Byron and then it kind of just happened so quick, you know, the, no oil pressure. And then I kind of had to make a decision and we started thrashing right away. So I didn't film anything and that's why we're here. So I just kind of had to backtrack a little bit and give you guys an update or a, uh, a follow up on we did good at the track and now we're pulling a motor out so that's where we're at all right guys day three we're at great lakes dragway we got the 4a in we drove for three three and a half hours we drove yesterday three and a half hours we put on the 48 engine and no issues we worked on it we worked on the tune when we got to the hotel the tune was a little off of course and then we were having weird boost issues. Well, when we put this motor in, we knew that it had broken exhaust manifold bolts and we never addressed it. We just kind of put it all together. And now that we're building boost and making boost, it is uh, basically bleeding off all the back pressure in the exhaust. So the boost is going crazy. So we were up till two in the morning last night working on everything. And I went to O'Reilly's and bought a exhaust clamp for like a Silverado or for anything with an LS really uh, it's about the easiest fix we can do the other side still broke and I think we've got a fix for that we went to O'Reilly's earlier to grab that and when we pulled back into the drag strip we literally pulled right into the lanes so it is way better than what it was with just fixing the one side we're gonna try to push fix the other side uh, before we make another pass Right now it's on about 16 PSI. I made chicken footed a little bit. I just wanted to live and uh, get a time slip for today. So let's see what happens. guys we went a 670 we went a, a 159 60 foot which is pretty cool um, we're already getting switched over we're gonna one and done it today we were floating valves really bad we made about 19 pounds of boost 19 pounds of boost on this 48 and uh, that's all that I'm gonna push it so we just want to get to the next stop it's a long drive today we're gonna be on the road for probably five hours so we're gonna load all this crap up and hit the road Good morning guys. We made it to Tri-State Dragway in Iowa. It's day four, six summer. Little 4.8 is running great. We're already unpacked and ready to go. Tire pressure is set. We'll check them again of course, but it was a long drive yesterday. We had, I think we we're on the road for four hour, three, four hours or so. We made a couple stops and hung out at the gas station or whatever, but should be a good day. We are going to attempt to make this thing go a little faster with what we got. The valve springs, of course, are going to set us back. I'm also having weird fluttery boost things going on, but 
We're gonna set the rev limiter higher on the two-step and try to get this thing to launch a lot harder. All right, guys, I've been in the lanes here. And this guy keeps coming over here and waxing my car. What are you doing, bud? Hey, we not only got to go fast, we got to look good while we're going fast. Okay? <laughs> That's so, I'll, I'll put this a little bit up. Imagine that, huh? Look at that. <laughs> so, does this thing going to look good on the starting line? Of course, first place always looks good. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> That's right, Sam. Thank you so much. She's looking great. <laughs> She's waxing her down. She's looking real good. <laughs> I think she's gonna cut through the air real nice. You know, we're gonna have good aerodynamics, we got plenty of power, so we gotta put on a good show and look good while you're putting on the show. Absolutely. So looking good, good. looking good. All right, guys, it's not often that I am like prepared and ready to talk to the camera when I'm in the staging lanes. Usually, I'm just hanging out and then bam, time to go. So, we're in the lanes. We keep finding like little goofy things with the, the exhaust and stuff going on because this thing had broken exhaust manifold bolts. So we found out that one was loose and it was causing it to do weird boost issues. At least that's what I'm hoping on right now. So we tighten that thing up and it should create a better seal. We are gonna launch a little bit harder and pray that it sticks and everything works out. It's gonna be a one and done pass today. So, yeah.
All right, guys, we made it to Motion Raceworks. Uh, we pulled the truck straight in the shop. Our buddy Brian brought us some valve springs. We may be under the impression that this thing is floating valves because of the stock valve springs. So we're gonna put some dual 660s in here. And I just got done doing this side. I'm almost done. Cody's gonna take over doing this real quick. So we're gonna throw these in here and then maybe do a burnout or something, see if how it feels. Hey, Bill. You know, I was over here doing valve springs and you undid my air hose and I almost dropped a valve. What? <laughs> the valve, the air compressor hose runs I to charge. It. Who, who, somebody unhooked it? Who did it? Whoever was helping me out. Ah, oh, somebody's fired. <laughs> I didn't do it. I asked him I have an air hose so I can use the driver. <laughs> somebody unhooked that thing, almost dropped a valve right in that sucker. Yeah. Close call. All right, we just put the valve springs in. We're gonna pull outside, maybe do a little two-step check and see if we can feel any difference in the boost, so. Sunglasses, sunglasses. <laughs> Day five, six summer, 2023. We made it home. We're at my shop. Did a little tune, a little more tuning on the 4.8 last night. We put those valve springs in. Um, I think it fixed a little issue up top on the RPM side, 
but it still has a weird boost flutter type of situation. So I'm going to change the plugs in this thing and I'm probably going to use my little fancy smoke machine and smoke out the intake system just to make sure I don't have any boost leaks or maybe I might do exhaust as well. Maybe I still have exhaust leaks. So we can do that real quick here at my shop. I was able to sleep in my own bed last night with my family and my girls. I'm pretty stoked about that. I got a really good night's sleep. It's the last day. We're going to turn this thing up. Let's see what the little 4.8 can do. Stock cam 4.8 with 240,000 miles. We're going to try to go fives. We'll see. Got the smoke machine going and you can see it coming out of the air filters now, which of course is normal because I have it hooked up to the bottom of the intake. And I did notice a slight leak. I know it's gonna be impossible to see, but a slight leak in the fitting to the blow off valve, which could potentially be an issue. So I'm gonna try to snug that up. Uh, you can see the smoke coming out of there the air filter but you also notice little things that's pretty wild like you can see smoke coming out of here smoke coming out of the throttle body which um, supposedly is pretty normal I don't see any coming out anywhere else uh, turn this unit off this stuff stinks too so Yeah, not too bad. I think we're in good shape. I'm gonna fix, I'm gonna try to get this fitting tightened up for the blow off valve, cause that, if, if this is not getting a great um, seal or vacuum or whatever, it could be opening up this blow off valve and we could be losing boost out of that. Okay, up next, we're gonna smoke out the exhaust. I just shoved it right in the tailpipe. And uh, so it'll go all through the tailpipe up through the hot side of the turbo oh I can already see a real gnarly leak right there oh well solve that issue coming right out of the v-band of the pipe because that is not on worth a shit I'll be damned All right, guys, we're in the lanes at Cordova. It's day five. Biff, how are you feeling? Uh, yeah. I'm on the high. Man. You went? Did you go today? No, no. no. You I'm went? At, I'm trying to do a 10, oh, 10, one, right some little 10, and then something that starts with a nine. Yeah, then, buddy. All right. I'm gonna try to go fives today on the stock 4.8. You got it. You got it. That thing is loose and turning free. Man, we do. We do got her wicked up. After a meeting with the mines, everybody's ideas have come together and we've found all kinds of little weird kinks here and there. A lot of stuff to improve on. So uh, I was going to put plugs in it, but I didn't have time. I got here, we unloaded, we switched tires. And uh, as soon as I switched tires and started icing down, they called us up to the lanes. So I think it's, I think it's going to go, I think it's going to go pretty good. And if it doesn't, uh, you know, she might blow up. We'll see. I feel confident about it, though. We're about to make our first pass, guys. Hopefully it sticks and holds like it's been doing. And we should be pretty good. I think it should be a good pass.
on the head. I don't think it was a five second pass. I'd be surprised if they went like a yeah, like a 640 or something, maybe six, yeah, probably 640 if I had to guess. But it's still together. Still together. These guys are gonna talk me into turning it up and it's probably not gonna take that much. Thank you. 159, 640, right on the dot. springs 